Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, week of trading. Uh, for all you guys who are coming aboard, viewing for the first time, welcome aboard. Like, subscribe, share. Come aboard, share this uh, mission of unbiased uh, technical analysis journey on a day-by-day -day basis uh, based on data, right? Not based on our opinions. Uh, I've always stated uh, I'm an idiot. I'm probably the biggest idiot. And if I had to guess uh, where the market would be, uh, I would be in a really bad shape. So it's all about the numbers. It's all about uh, data crunching and applying it when stocks uh, confirm. So here we are. Okay, we end of the week, uh, NASDAQ up 3.3%, the S&P uh, and the Dow up about a little less than two and a half percent. And when you look at the year to date totals, the QQQs are up 42%. That's staggering. That's absolutely staggering. Uh, the loss of 31% in 2022 is plus 12% to 11% uh, going into this week. And, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those scenarios that we're seeing now seven months into the year that we're getting this really aggressive rally, right? And then just when you think they pull back a little bit, just a little bit to kind of reset their uh, feet, kind of get their uh, wind, be, you know, wind behind them, um, they start going again. And it's that parabolic move. It's like, you know, like NVIDIA has been a perfect example. Uh, if you watch the, the video on Wednesday, you know, we talked about how aggressive they were coming uh, for the 450 calls, just a one after another, after another. And this was the highest close in this whole formation yeah, you know, 450, you know, the stock went to 480. I mean, it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. A name like Tesla, when they started coming uh, coming out of the range here, we were watching the top of the range here, finally confirmed. Again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. You know, they were coming for the 300 calls. Now we know why. Uh, they were coming for the 300 calls uh, before earnings that's on Wednesday because, well, the first Gigafactory is officially built uh, in Texas, and they're going to start rolling out the Cybertruck. So they knew that, that the options market, guys, again, it dictates the underlying stock. The more you see bet bets coming in, the more aggressive these bets are coming in, the more frequent these bets are coming in, the same option chain and the same expiration, short term, deep out of the money. And especially in this type of environment, there's a high probability somebody knows something Somebody got a wind of it. It's spread like wildfire and betters are going in the options market and really putting down some major wood. And that's exactly what happened with Tesla. That's exactly what happened with NVIDIA. Remember those 450 calls? Again, just the, vi just the video just on Wednesday, just the one video back, right? Microsoft, we were talking about Wednesday, they were coming for the 345 weeklies, right? Again, they got upgraded. They knew, right? They knew in this market, it it's almost crazy crazy it, like years ago you guys remember that movie wall street and some of you guys uh maybe you haven't seen i think most people saw it with charlie sheen um you know bud fox and gordon gecko and all that stuff there was like a whole big stigma in the 1980s inside of trading inside of trading it was like this cloak and dagger world now all you need to do is have an option scanner you know when they're coming for these deep out of the money calls somebody knows something so it's amazing nobody it's just nobody is afraid of prison. They're 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 buying stock. They they don't care. You know they don't they're buying the options market. Uh, it's crazy. But now you can just follow along. Get yourself a scanner. Uh, they're all you know they're all pretty much comparable. Uh, Flow Algo is what I use. Uh, Cheddar Flow. Uh, uh, option. What is it? Trade Alerts. Uh, Black Box Stock. There's like a million of them. They're all you know they're all pretty much. Uh, the same thing. Get yourself an option scanner. You'll you'll see all these aggressive bets, and you know in this type of environment, they're they're really really uh, playing out. I, again, if you look at the indexes, again the QQQs, absolute runaway train, ugly ugly reversal uh, in the middle of the day. You can see here everything was just screaming screaming up, and a lot of stocks that had huge moves in the morning gave it all back really really aggressively, and it really does show you Amazon, Nvidia. Uh, you know, all these things give it really, really right back. And it really does to show you is, again, if you keep on chasing levels that are outside of the breakout price, 
you're jumping off the 12th floor. So for example, Microsoft, the breakout was here. We'll show you, we'll show you the pivots in a second. The breakout was at 343. It wasn't at three, you know, 349. It wasn't at you know, three, uh, 351. That's the 12th floor. That's what we always talk about, jumping out of the 12th floor. Don't jump. If you're going to jump, jump out of the first floor, right? That's the 343 breakout. Remember, there's only one breakout. Everything else is, is a continuation. And the higher a stock goes away from its breakout level, the higher the probability the stock will get pulled harder. So for example, look in the video, right? The video broke out right here, right? It broke out at 339. Look at the pull, right? Look at the pull. However, a stock like Tesla that broke out above 378, right? This little channel here, 378, although it did give back some uh, into the close, it held majority of its gains. So again, closer to the breakout, you'll have a, you have a higher probability of surviving the fall out of the first floor than 60 points out of the money in three days like NVIDIA, and you could get pulled for dollars. So just always remember, there's only one breakout stock, right? There's only one breakout, and everything else is a follow-through, continuation. You're trying to find the stocks that are closer to the bottom of the range than they are to the top of the range because you have a higher probability of succeeding when the stock gets above that range. And if you're wrong, you're wrong for pennies because you know how exactly... Uh, how important that level is, then instead of losing dollars, uh, you know, following the stock 20, 30 points uh, after its breakout level. So we started earnings season, right? Uh, you know, we started earnings season. The banks kicked off uh, the earnings season. I think it was a Thursday or Friday. Uh, Citibank, uh, we have on Monday, nothing really big on Monday. Tuesday, you have Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, PNC, more banks. Wednesday is what I'm, you know, what I'm, um, really uh, concentrating on Wednesday, we have Tesla, right? Uh, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of 13 F filings over the weekend, really, really big uh, money managers uh, taking big stakes in Tesla. You can just go, go through the internet, can go through Twitter, you'll see a lot of filings uh, over this week. BlackRock, Fidelity, you know, people taking some positions. Uh, again, they were coming for the 300 calls uh, very, very aggressively ahead of earnings, ahead of Wednesday earnings. They did uh, come out with that pretty good PR uh, after the close about the, rolling out the first Gigafactory, finally done uh, in Texas. You know, is the stock going to get a, a run, uh, pre-earnings run going into next week? I mean, the chart looks great, right? The chart looks absolutely great. Um, you know, it could definitely, definitely get a run into uh, into the earnings. Is it possible we see 300 ahead of earnings? Sure, absolutely. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, Netflix, also, uh, Netflix also comes out with earnings um on wednesday as well and i believe ibm as well ibm and then you got goldman sachs as well and then throughout the week uh next week the following week you have pretty much everybody else the following week uh the apples of the world uh, the metas uh the amazon so far the google so far and so on but the question is going into this earnings season is well now we had this massive run right we had this absolutely massive run and again uh, NVIDIA is probably the poster boy of this parabolic moonshot that we've having. The question is, is this baked in, right? Isn't that always the question going into earnings season? And you could only speculate. You could only guess. But speaking of the options market, right? NVIDIA, we saw ahead of earnings, okay? They're buying the 500 calls. And keep this in mind. This is after the stock went from 298 to 480. They're going aggressive into the 500 calls, Right. A name like Netflix that had, you know, a really nice run, you know, they're betting the 500 calls as well. So it's very, very interesting to see is the market completely in la-la land is just discounting uh, every bit of reality, just doesn't want to come in no matter what. They're bidding it into euphoria. It doesn't make a difference. Or is it this time around a scenario that, well, maybe the earnings are baked in and it, maybe it's time to have a good, healthy Pullback. Again, I don't know the answer to that. We're just, you know, we're just thinking out loud. Our jobs as traders is to always put ourselves in the position that we're not uh, trading with, uh, you know, rose-colored glasses. We're trading uh, based on common sense and, and data. So it's very good. It's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, when Tesla and Netflix uh, kicks off earnings, especially after their runs uh, as well. You know, high how how high is this euphoria uh, is really being? Uh, gauged and obviously for the following week we'll see everything else with Amazon, Apple, uh, Meta, Google, uh, Google, so forth, uh, and so on. So here we are uh, on the indexes, right? And I, again, I, I try to look at the market from a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, even though I'm extremely bullish, as all you guys have been watching these broadcasts, 
you know, I always look at the market and say, is the market tired? At least for the next day, okay? I don't know what's going to happen two days from now, three days from now. Hell, I don't know what's going to happen Monday, but I'm always prepared on both sides of the market. And I look at the market on Friday and I turn around and go, well, look at all these reversals towards the end of the day, right? You had Q's, Q's basically went from, you know, 82 uh, to 78 in the last hour. NVIDIA literally just, just fell off a cliff. NVIDIA just literally went from uh, 480 to 450. This is in the last hour, right? AMD that had a ridiculous run at the open. Look at the move. It went from 122 all the way down to 115. And the question was, was this an exhaustion cycle, right? That That's the major, that's the only thing I have to fi try to figure out for Monday. Was this as an exhaustion cycle? Was this a scenario that too much, too fast, I think we need a break? Or, or is this one of those scenarios that, hey, who knows, maybe some program trading kicked in in the afternoon. They talked about some rebalancing. I know the rebalancing is not, wasn't for Friday. It's for a couple of weeks out. Maybe it had something to do with that. Who the hell knows? It's all speculation. I'm not smart enough to understand. Uh, I don't think anybody's smart enough to understand how the market goes on a second by second, hour by hour basis. We're just taking the closing prices and trying to formulate an opinion going into Monday. Here's how I look at it, right? Here's how I look at it, right? Look, if, if this was a, a short term, when I mean short term, I mean literally short term, uh, was if this was a short term kind of an exhaustion cycle, then yeah, you know what? I do want to watch some of these stocks on the bottom of the range going into Monday. Is it is it possible, you know, this was a, a, an, an outlier event and we continue to go up Monday? Of course. And then again, that's why I'm, I'm prepared on both sides of the market. But I want to watch the cues, right? I want to see what happens here. What happened, guys, write down this number. 378 on the cues. There's no macro implications on it. Usually I talk about macro levels when it's coming out of a channel or breaking down a channel. This was just the previous day's range. Watch the 378 level on the cues. If the cues start coming in below the 378 level and they start building below, which basically means price action is taking place below uh, Friday's lows, maybe we do get a back test for one or two days. And the way these stocks have been in orbit, Maybe the, you know, maybe the back test could be very, very aggressive. Again, you could only make a plan. We, we can't control the price action. We could only make a plan and see if that confirms. So watch, let's watch that 378 level on the queues. So if we're watching the queues 378, a lot of these stocks are going to correlate with the queues. So for example, I'm watching NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA had this ridiculous 30 point pullback, right? Let's keep an eye on this thing. If NVIDIA starts losing Friday's channel and you can see on the 60 minute view, if it starts losing this whole channel here, hey, the stock just ran up like a thousand points. Why can't we get five, 10, five, 10, 15 point move on the video, right? Something like this, I definitely, definitely want to watch. Uh, a name like Tesla, you know, I, I still think they're going to run this thing uh, ahead of its numbers. It broke out on Friday. This is the highest close in this whole formation. Um, you know, I want to watch this thing above Friday's channel in case they start, you know, really ramping up the stock uh, ahead of numbers. Uh, a name like L-I-T-E, I'm not really familiar with the name, but hey, look at the setup here. You know, the stock uh, lost its range on Friday. It touched the 50-day moving average. If this thing starts losing the 50-day moving average, who the hell knows? Maybe this thing could get hit. Uh, I don't know if Zoom will confirm on Monday, but let's watch it this week. You see how long this distribution channel is? And again, I always like to see what the options market is doing. Um, let's keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts getting above, you know, this whole channel here, maybe this thing can wake up. They started coming for the $80, uh, August call. So it's definitely a name, uh, that I want to pay attention to. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of more names that I want to watch. And then we'll kind of run through the pivots really quickly from Friday. Uh, AI, look at AI. AI had a big, big run, right? Big, big run. First close below, uh, the 20 day moving average. I want to keep an eye on this thing in case the market does have weakness. Uh, maybe this thing gets another pull. And a smaller price name. Look at the stock, uh, FOLD. Uh, nice looking chart. It's held up for two days in a row. Nice looking channel here. Uh, look at the weekly view on FOLD, right? This is getting very, very close into uh, a multi, multi, you know, almost a six month breakout. So this could be uh, pretty good this week if you are trading smaller names. Keep an eye on that as well, right? So we're kind of set up uh, for Monday tentatively. I want to see if there is going to be a follow through from Friday sell off just to give us some cash flow. Again, nobody's talking about Armageddon. Nobody's saying the video is going to go back to, to 200. We're just taking it trade by trade, trying to take advantage of gravity and the previous day's channels. That's it. Nothing more, uh, nothing less. The same way we would take advantage to the upside uh, if the stock was breaking out. We're not trying to guess 
uh, where it's going to be three weeks from now. We're just trying to get a piece of the pie uh, for Monday. So let's talk about Monday. Uh, let's talk about Friday. Uh, as you can imagine, some in incredible, incredible moves. Again, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, both Tesla and Microsoft closed above their breakout prices on Thursday, and they both did pretty well, right? So here is Thursday, and again, there's no Thursday video. Uh, Thursday's video, they, were, they were started coming in with size buyers, comes in for the 300 calls for super experienced traders. You can start above 275, but it has to get above 278. It did that, right? It closed uh, It closed well, highest close in the whole formation. Tesla actually started the day down, okay? It was down like a dollar, dollar and change pre-market. But once it started getting going, had a two moves. Initial move was like the 280 and a half. That was the June highs. And once it got above the June highs, I think I said there was a potential to get the 284 and a quarter. Tesla went to 285 and changed. So really great job. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who had Tesla. Uh, letter U. Uh, broke out on Friday. Uh, I sold, uh, you know, and this has been a, such a really great trader. Uh, you know, nice move. It, it failed at $48 level, but again, from 45 to 848. Uh, great job there. Microsoft, uh, 343 needs to build. It confirmed pretty much within 10, 15 minutes into the close on Thursday, got upgraded, uh, got upgraded, and went all the way up to uh, three, almost 352. So huge, huge move there. Uh, as well, PRLTR uh, didn't confirm, uh, Roblox didn't confirm. Uh, TTDO, I, I didn't trade. I know it went up like a couple of bucks. It was a little too thin for me. Yeah, it went up a couple of bucks and then the market completely just died. Um, Disney never got to 91. A nice move on Google, 124.83 needs to build. Here was Google, uh, took out the 124.83, went to almost 127, actually held up uh, fairly well. Netflix went up like two, three points and they got just absolutely destroyed. Uh, AFRM never got to 18. It's, it's actually, uh, it's actually, um, it's actually pretty interesting. They were coming for next, was it the seven? I can't remember which option series it was. I think it was the August, can't remember we watched, but they were coming for the $21 calls. Keep an eye on this thing, uh, especially if it starts reclaiming 18 bucks. Other than that, you know, really solid action, uh, you know, really, really solid action all the way around. Um, the most important thing, again, just always remember, guys, uh, don't look at it from a euphoric point of view. Always play devil's advocate. Always put yourself in a position that you are uh, playing the defender, right? I, I always say this, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves, always lead with your shield, not with your chin, meaning, you know, wake the hell up, right? You know, it's not peaches and cream. It's not a day at the beach. Sometimes... Uh, what you're seeing is what you want to see, not reality. So I definitely want to, you know, be a little bit cautious to at least the start of the week. Uh, watch the cues and watch a lot of the stocks that are correlated with the cues because if they do start losing uh, Friday's channel, we could get some pretty good value uh, to a downside potential poll. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Have a great remainder of your weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take